I am a chief data scientist at the NICE Optimize. NICE Optimize helps to assess the risk financial organizations are facing and keeps them a step ahead of financial crime. The agenda of today's talk is to introduce you to a NICE Optimize anti-money laundering advanced machine learning solution. After presenting uh, the existing solution, I will exhibit a new approach of spectral clustering of high dimensional data via sparse representation. I will elaborate about the concept behind, then I will address uh, some mathematical notions, uh, following by results and comparison. Towards the end, I will summarize the key points of the lecture. <clears throat> Today's money laundering and terrorist financing risks are dynamic and fast growing. To stay ahead, address complex regulatory and legal uh, landscape. Anti money laundering software solution must accurately identify and report suspicious uh, transactions while reducing false positives. In anti-money laundering, we rule the followers. Regulatory rules keep the financial uh, system safe. Those rules are for governing deposits, transfers, and payments. In anti-money laundering, uh, <laughs> often investigations find entities play outside the rules, sometimes alerting common everyday transactions as risky. When we alert on every outlier, financial organizations are buried with false positives. And then it takes days or weeks to, to review that. Meanwhile, legitimate businesses become risky and sometimes shut down. Yet, if financial organizations reduce alerting, they face exposure to risk, fines, and sometimes reputational damage. The following scheme demonstrates workflow pipeline in high level. Raw data acquisition, uh, data uh, aggregation and profiling, uh, business segmentation, data pre-processing, uh, cluster analysis, and finally, optimization thresholds, parameters on resulted clusters. Uh, data acquisition is the process of bringing uh, the data in. The data aggregation and profiling is the process of flattening the data by calculating the aggregated uh, statistics per uh, each feature for a predefined period of time. Pre-process is vital for volume reduction of immense amount of data. Business segmentation is a process which segments the financial data by certain business rules based on perceived uh, risks and monitoring requirements. Pre-process the data includes dimensionality reduction techniques and feature selection by different criteria. The methods of outlier analysis are applied, features are selected by zero variance, intercorrelations, sparsity, uniqueness, and other conditions. After the feature selected, there is a process of feature importance. This process selects only those features which have the most impact on business segment clustering. Then normalization and standardization techniques apply. To give you a sense, I will bring you a real-time, uh, real-life uh, example. The number of initial vectors uh, on, on can vary around 100, uh, 1,000 uh, on a typical uh, customer data. After the process of dimensionality reduction and feature selection, up to up to f uh, two percent of the features remains. That is due to large sparsity of ma of the majority of vectors. One of the predominant reason for that is the nature of business uh, party. For example, a bank account which may mainly serves the loans, and therefore it has a few transactions. As a recap, our data in NICE Optimize uh, is uh, high dimensional data and, uh, with large sparsity. Business segments are further divided into clusters by using hard clustering key means partitioning algorithm. Multiple features of profile components are used to determine uh, the clusters. In fact, the set of features can be different for each business segment. Consequently, uh, special clusters are created within each business segment. 
It proves for new and latent or uh, uh, inactive entities. A cluster should be large enough to create business values and process. Having up to a reasonable number of clusters per segment might be okay, but if particular clusters are too large, potentially it might be a problem. On the other hand, if uh, the clusters are too small, it uh, has no uh, uh, business value and we uh, actually uh, ignore it. Individual clusters uh, are too small uh, and it can contain any business value. Therefore, we're likely to take him, uh, not take him into the consideration. After clustering, the process of auto-tuning is applied on each cluster in order to intelligently optimize thresholds on rules to accurately detect criminals, leaving legitimate outliers alone. Auto-tuning can be regarded to a smart query uh, which extracts precisely and accurately the indispensable information. Distinctness and exactness affect the further decision regard regarding the likelihood of a certain pattern to be prime. After auto-tuning optimization is done, there is a sophisticated scoring algorithm that leads to the creation of highly focused alerts. The score is indication for a suspicious activity. Eventually, the manual review of ranked alert is made by an expert. The human decides whether to escalate the alert to, to leave it uh, for further monitoring or to mark it as not suspicious. Now we can clearly understand the problem of false positives. The larger number of false positives, the greater amount of human resources might be involved in the manual review. One of the primary objectives is to reduce the false positives. In fact, there are two, uh, two factors which directly affect the number of false positives. The, the factor number one is a good separation between clusters. And the factor number two is uh, efficient auto-tuning optimization. In this lecture, I'm going to focus on the first factor, which is good separation between the clusters. I will show our advanced cluster analysis uh, approach, other than a k-mean uh, positioning algorithm. And to sum up what has been uh, said, the main idea behind the cluster analysis in anti-money laundering is to help the customer to examine specific slice of, uh, financial, uh, of massive financial data expeditiously in order to execute various queries for suspicious pattern detection. What are we trying to achieve in anti-money laundering? We are trying to better detect usual behavior early and faster, to minimize false positives without missing crime and maximizing true positives, find different behavior group inside business segmentation, optimize rules, thresholds per behavioral entity transaction profile. That would mean the ability to detect a well-separated cluster of significant size which has a high business value and <coughs> low number of sparse uh, feature vectors. So, what prevents us uh, from achieving that? There are two major issues we need to tackle. Poor separation between the clusters per business segment and high dimensionality, uh, dimensionality uh, sparse data. Sparse feature vectors lead to the following implication. The first implication, it is difficult to decide about the proportion of dimensions and the possible bias. The second implication is when dimension lack information, it is impossible to decide about relevancy of this dimension. This implies that the resulting distance measure may have only a certain range of valid, of uh, actual valid distances. <coughs> Why spectral clustering? Preliminary research results indicate the spectral clustering via sparse representation segments a large high dimensional uh, datasets of financial transactions more accurately and more precisely. The evidence leads us to a more efficient and strict investigation in uh, anti-money laundering. That means robust separation between clusters, a reduction of false positive without putting the risk uh, legitimate entities, conceive abnormal behavior pattern, prove better irregularity detection, and create smarter per group P groupings to more accurate rules and alerts. 
Now, I'm going to, uh, to explain concisely the concept of spectral clustering via sparse representation. I will show the experience behind the concept of spectral clustering, and then I will address a mathematical notion regarding sparse representation. And finally, we will see how spectral clustering can utilize uh, sparse representation. Now, let's, uh, let's start with the definition of similarity matrix. Uh, each element uh, of uh, similarity matrix at index ij equals to e to power minus square distance between two vectors over squared sigma, where si and sj are two vectors, distance between si and sj is distance between two vectors, and sigma is a measure of uh, similarity between two points. We usually, usually it is selected manually. It can also be automatically uh, running with clusters many times with different values and selecting the one producing the least distorted cluster. Uh, we calculated sigma uh, i for each data point si instead of a single scaling parameter. We analyze the neighborhood of each point si and thus define sigma i as a distance d between si and sk where sk is a case neighbor of point si. What is spectral clustering? Spectral clustering refers to a class of techniques which rely on eigen structure of the similarity matrix to partition data into disjoint clusters. The notion of similarity is playing the following role here. Data points belonging to the same clusters having high similarity. Those points belonging to different clusters have low similarity. Perceiving the similarity matrix is much more valuable and useful than observing the clusters directly. Similarity matrix depicts much more gainful information, especially in case of high dimensional data. An illustrative example of that would be a B-variate plot, the one you can see now on the screen. Now let's concentrate, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I want to show you another example. Uh, let's see another example of spectral clustering. Re reducing the dimensionality uh, of, and finding main principal component might be an efficient way to detect clusters too. Also we can see that spectral cluster analysis has an ability to cluster a non-convex data in a very efficient way. Now let's concentrate on the mathematical notion of sparse representation. Given a sufficient high, dimension, high dimensional training data set, where xi is a column vector of i's object, research on manifold uh, learning has proved that any new test data y lies on a lower dimensional manifold, which can be approximately represented by a linear combination of the object, of the training object. If we add the constraint to the best solution, equation number one should be as sparse as possible, which means that the number of non-zero elements is minimized, and the solution becomes unique. Such sparse representation can be obtained by solving the optimization problem, equation, equation number two, where L0 is a norm of a vector. Since the real data contain noise, it might not be possible to express test sample uh, exactly as sparse representation of the data. The sparse solution alpha can still be approximately obtained by solving the stable L1 norm normalization, optimization, equation number three. In many situations, we do not know the, the noise level. Then we can use a least absolute shrinkage and selection operator algorithm, optimization algorithm, to recover the sparse solution from the equation number three. Gamma is a regularization parameter of loss of penalty, which directly determines how sparse alpha will be and balances uh, the trade-off between the reconstruction and re reconstruction of the error and the sparsity. Typically, clustering on compressed representation performs better. 
it has a better complexity of time and space than the, on, on the regional data. So what is the connection between sparse coefficients vectors and the similarity between the objects? Evidently, the sparse coefficient vectors corresponding to two similar objects are similar. And those sparse coefficient vectors who belongs to, who corresponds to two dissimilar objects are actually dissimilar. The main idea of clustering via sparse representation is to build weight matrix directly from normalized and symmetrized sparse representation coefficients, called sparsity-induced similarity measure. Approach of weight measure derives from the sparse representation. It can reveal the neighborhood structure of, uh, without calculating actual uh, Euclidean distance, which means a great potential for clustering for, of high dimensional data. Our approach to find optimal number of clusters in spectral clustering based on the perturbation theory and uh, uh, graph theory. Eigen gap heuristics suggests the number of clusters is usually given by a value k that maximizes the Eigen gap. But what is the uh, Eigen gap? Eigen gap is the difference between consecutive Eigen values. The larger the Eigen gap is, the closer the Eigen vectors of the ideal case, and hence the better spectral clustering works. Uh, this is a snapshot of a code that calculates Eigen decomposition. The function gets similarity matrix, plots sorted Eigen values, and returns two things. One, tuple containing optimal number of clusters by Eigen heuristics, and second, all Eigen values and all Eigen vectors. Eigen decomposition on a given similarity matrix is calculated as follows. Constructs the normalized <coughs> similarity matrix, finds eigenvalues and corresponding associated eigenvectors, identifies the maximum gap which uh, corresponds to the number of clusters by eigengap heuristics. Let's have a look at the comparative results between hard k-means uh, partitioning uh, algorithm, hard clustering k-means partitioning algorithm, and spectral clustering via sparse representation. There are four inner evaluation indices. The blue segmented line represents the performance of hard clustering k-means partitioning algorithm. The green segmented line represents the performance of spectral clustering analysis via sparse representation. Red circles express uh, small clusters which are not taken into consideration due to its low business value. Uh, the axis X represents the number of clusters, number of optimal clusters. Blue and green field circle represent the optimal number of clusters accordingly. So a few remarks about uh, internal index evaluation. SMD index is in the upper left corner, upper left corner, indicates the average scattering for clustering and total separation between two clusters. The low the value, the low values are better. SDBW index in the upper right corner relies on the notion of density of points belonging to two clusters. Low values are better. Silhouette method in the bottom right corner refers to the interpretation and validation of consistency within the clusters. High values are better. Uh, kalinsky harabaz index in the bottom left corner uh, indicates the variance ratio criteria index and used to evaluate the optimum uh, number of uh, clusters. The difference is, uh, according to this comparison, we can see that uh, both methods suggest uh, k equals 2. But the difference is that the general level of separation for these clusters is different. Spectral clustering via sparse representation outperforms k means algorithm. Now let's view briefly the following pseudocode that describes general procedure for spectral clustering of high dimensional data using sparse representation. The basic idea is to extract coefficients of sparse representation, lines number one to four. 
construct a weighted matrix using the coefficient, line number five, and feed the weight matrix into spectral clustering algorithm, uh, line number six, to find the best partitioning efficacy. In, in fact, those are three steps in the, this procedure. First step is to solve L1 optimization of sparse representation to obtain coefficients of each data item. Second step is to exploit weight matrix between items on coefficients we have found in the previous stage, in the step one, number one. The third part is to utilize spectral clustering algorithm with weight matrix to get partition of the graph, which is graph reconstruction. In this lecture, I am not addressing the problem of uh, graph reconstruction due to the time constraints. Now, let's have a look at the algorithm of constructing a weight matrix based on similarity coefficients according to cosine similarity of sparse coefficients between uh, pairs of items. The computational complexity, complexity for calculating that would be O of n of two vectors of uh, length n. And uh, there are O of two of n to power of two pairs of data objects whose cosine similarity needs to be computed. Thus, the overall complexity for building weighted matrix is O of n to the power of three. After constructing the weighted matrix W, we can use a general procedure for spectral uh, clustering we have just seen in the previous slide to discover the cluster structures of high dimensional data. So far, I have uh, exhibited the general synopsis regarding the spectral clustering, high, dimensional, uh, high dimensions, and sparse representation. To sum up this lecture, I will underline two keys. Spectral clustering is a class of techniques which relies on the Eigen value of similar, uh, Eigen structure of similarity matrix. Examining similarity matrix is much more efficient than analyzing clusters directly. The main idea of spectral clustering is to build a weight matrix directly from the coefficients of sparse representation. Uh, while sparse representation proves the effectiveness for compressing the high dimensional uh, data, spectral clustering algorithm based on sparse representation using those sparse coefficients directly. By using spectral clustering via sparse representation, we can exploit more global information for more truthful similarity among the data. So by presenting you this research, I want to highlight uh, accomplishments we have made so far. Robust separation of complex aggregated data with uh, large sparsity, more accurate and precise segmentation of financial data uh, by different criteria, significant reduction of false positives without putting in risk the legitimate uh, business, and reducing investigation time for our customers. Thank you very much. You are welcome to join NICE Optimize for a variety of challenging and interesting positions.